my name is Terry Sproul and I want to welcome you to my studio. This is our live Tuesday night show. So if you're watching this at a later date, think about subscribing to my YouTube channel. Give me a thumbs up and consider joining us live on Tuesdays. Um, there's my blog and that's where you can find all the information and also on the group called All Things Terry Sproul. I'm going to switch cameras and we're going to get right to it. So give me a second here as I switch cameras. Okay, tonight I actually had a special request for this particular page. I did this page um, a couple days ago, just sitting trying to relax, actually. And it's all done with watercolors. And somebody said, that is so pretty, Terry. Please teach me how to do that. So we're going to do something similar to that. But we're going to use another journal because I don't want to have two pages in the same journal that are similar. And this is the journal that we made um, together, um, I don't know, about a month or two or three ago. God, time just flies. I don't even know that we put the inclusions in. So we're actually going to play with an inclusion this time around. Um, uh, Joe is not here to help me, so um, Danielle is here, so she'll be putting up all the links um, for tonight's show. So if you have any questions, please put your questions in caps, and we'll do our best to um, find them. Okay, I'm just making sure I've got my book taken care of, and I'm opening it up so it's kind of a flat book. Okay, now... I know a lot of you claim you can't draw and all that, and I consider myself, I don't consider myself somebody who can really draw either. So I have to admit, I am going to draw towards myself here. And flowers are pretty simple. If you kind of think of a heart shape, they kind of have a kind of like of a heart shape of a, um, a leaf. So, you know, I know this isn't very dark. Let me see if I can zoom that in a little, because I like to draw kind of really light due to the fact that I don't want my lines to show up. So this is kind of a heart shape, and then I'm going to go with another leaf right here. And then one more. One more leaf. Oh, let me get one more leaf in there. We'll go right up into this conclusion. So there we go. We've got, you know, four or five leaves, basic flower, nothing really fancy. And then I'm going to do a couple more here. And I always like to go off the page. We've talked about that when I used the stamps last week. So I'm going to kind of work the same way, thinking this is my center of my flower right here. So I'm just going to kind of work with that as the center of my flower. So again, there's kind of another basic flower, real simple. And then I'm going to go over to this side and kind of do the same thing. So again, you know, and honestly, this will this will be another hint that I can give you. If you feel like that you can't draw, um, me looking at pictures really helps me be able to draw something a little better. And even if I'm, you know, like drawing, if I want to do something on an airplane or something, I might take and do my drawing at home where I can copy an image but then color it on the airplane or so so here i've got one two three four flowers on my my page now okay so i'm going to zoom out now that you kind of get the general idea of the flowers real basic and again i'm going to i'll show you a little closer there see those oh sorry i don't know why that does that it does that when i uh, get too close i don't know why but you can kind of see they're real basic shapes. Okay, when I use, when I like to do watercolor, I do like to get this kind of um, a roundish brush. And you can find this over at Michael's. And this is actually one that I did pick up at, um, it's called a Fil Filbert brush. And it's a number 10. And it's kind of got a nice round edge. Now I activated my Twinkling H2Os right before I came on camera. Let me zoom out a little further here by just taking my water bottle and just spraying directly into them. The longer you let them sit, just an FYI, the more kind of rich they come. And in the beginning, this first technique, I want them to not be so rich. I want them to be kind of more watery. So I'm going to make sure you guys can see that. Pick up, this is real watery. I'm going to pick up some color on my brush and I'm using a really light pink. 
and I'm almost going to take some of the water off and I'm just going to fill in this general flower with my pink real soft pink let me figure out what color this is saffron pink the really light pink and I'm just going to keep adding water as I need and twinkling h2o's are from color art And I'm, I'm working with the lightest color right now. And when I do watercolors, I usually only work with a few colors for my um, watercolors. Sometimes only one or two for the flowers. So really light pink throughout the whole flower. I'm going to go down here and do the same one because they're all going to be pink. And again, I'm just doing a real simple, almost like a wash, I want to say. Twinkling H or, um, Color Art, while I'm talking about them, is having a challenge this month over at colorart.blogspot.com. So that's something, if you like to win prizes, that's a real easy way to win a prize. You do have to put your image somewhere on a blog or a um, on like Flickr. But if you're part of my group over on Facebook called All Things Terry Sproul, and you don't have a blog, but you want to join in on some of these challenges that some of these companies are doing, I actually started a blog for that group. And I will gladly add you to it if you agree to the terms, which isn't too much. It's just basically saying you have to be nice. <laughs> Real easy. Real easy terms. You can't write, put anything real negative on the blog, that kind of stuff. So you see, real basics. Look, what do I have already? It's a real basic, simple, um, colored one. Color wash. Go on. Put a little more light on there for you guys. My son's starting to cause me problems and giving me too much light. I'm going to dry this side real quick just so I can go to the other side. And flowers aren't perfect, so you really don't have to stress on trying to make a perfect flower. Now, I've got a little bit of color coming in from the page below, so I'm just going to dab that green away. It's just coming in from the page next to it. Okay, I'm going to switch over here, and I'm going to do the exact same thing to these flowers. Again, just adding water to my Twinkling H2Os to make them real watery. And it being real watery is going to give you a really soft, color as they become soft but yet less watery they become more of a solid color I don't know how to explain that less uh, I don't know how to explain that better um, they become more more pigmented I guess is the word I'm looking for So again, just doing a real simple wash, and I'm doing the whole flower, even the center, because I'm going to go in and put more color in there later, which will give us... So again, see how soft that color is? You can barely see it. It's so soft. I think this is causing us too much light. Let's switch that away. Okay, got one more flower down here to do. This will probably be a really simple, quick page tonight. But, you know, that's what's great about art journaling. Sometimes you only have like 10 minutes and you need that, I'm going to call it color therapy, because it is for me. Sometimes you need that therapy. I've been having a really crazy, crazy busy week for the last, actually, a couple weeks now. And I needed a chance to play in my art journal. And that's when I did that page. It was real quick, real simple. Okay, I'm going to quickly dry this side just so I can work on the other side. Okay, now I'm going to come back over to these two flowers, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit for you guys so you can see more. Why do you keep doing that, camera? I don't know why my camera is doing that, giving us that weird... Hmm... See if it gets a little better. Okay, 
Now, I'm going to go back in again with that same pink that we did the first time. I haven't switched colors. I'm going to go in the same pink, and I'm going to put a second coat in. And the second coat is not going to go everywhere. Oh, sorry. Off camera. Sorry. Um, second coat's not going to go everywhere. It's going to go kind of around the edges, really, especially where your, your two petals meet. That's where you would have, if you think about what would be darker on the flower, that those areas would be darker. So I'm going to go down to this one right here. Again, using that same pink that we started with. And see how much darker the second coat is? It's given us more of a shade. And I also like to kind of tap my brush instead of um, brushing it. Because it kind of gives you more texture in a way. Again, where my my edges would be would be darker. Where the two two um, petals meet would be darker. So I'm just kind of adding shade at this point with that same color. I haven't even changed colors. That's what's kind of cool. If you I've had a lot of people comment on this. What, I want to go on vacation. I can't take my whole um, craft room. What do I take? Your watercolors, your watercolor brush, a bottle, and your art journal. All you need. And you can do a lot of really fun, you know, pages and really relaxing type stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to switch to a little darker pink. And this one's called... Playful Peony. And this one's a little darker. And I'm going to kind of use this as my center. So my center, I'm going to go in and just tap. And I'm kind of using the, sorry, you can't see that. Kind of using the top of my brush and going like that. Because it's going to give you texture. And it's going to kind of give you that look of a center of a flower. So already we've got a beautiful flower going and we've only been playing a few minutes. So I'm going to go up and do, oh, sorry, off camera. Being bad today. Do this one up here on the top. And my center is kind of in the corner. A lot of times at this point I might come back to that lighter pink. Not even wash my brush off. To go back into that lighter pink because now I'm going to have kind of a tone between the two of them and I might go in a little bit darker again right along where I want it to be more shaded. You definitely want to have an area kind of in the center of your flower that is stays really really light. Okay, come down to this bigger flower down here. And I'm going to have to do something with these lights. I'm really not happy with my lighting lately. Again, I'm kind of tapping around those edges again. Nope, let me turn Facebook off. Nobody wants to listen to those dings. Plus, it ends up on my recording. <laughs> so, kind of going around those edges, getting that depth in there. And if you think it's too dark, you can always tap it off. You know, so if you get where you think, oh, that, I kind of ruined it there. I went too dark. It's okay. You can come back and fix that. Can always be fixed. And I don't necessarily wipe it off. I'm kind of tapping it. So it's getting part of the color, but not all of it. And I'm really using a tapping motion on my brush. I'm really not brushing like, like you do with acrylic paints. It's kind of more gentle, more soothing. It's really more soothing than, um, than see, look how, look at the depth in that, that flower already. In just a few minutes, we've been working. Amazing. This is why I love these things. 
So again, I'm going in with that really light pink. I'm going around the edges a little darker. Just getting my shadows in there. And you know, if you think about it, a whole, you know, part of the flower might be more shaded than the other parts. Like this leaf right here, I've made a big shadow over here, but this side's really, still really light. So, um, I don't know if I talked about there, if you're a scrapbooker, there is a cool challenge going on on the Robin's Nest, which is chatteringrobins.blogspot.com. And up at the top, you're going to find a, a button that says monthly sketch or monthly uh, challenge. So check that out if you're looking for a scrapbook challenge. Again, I'm just continuing tapping. And I'm still using that really light pink. I'm even going to kind of go in with the light pink now and go over my little center again with that tapping motion. And that's just going to give me depth because I'll have the darker and the lighter color. So it's going to give you more depth. So see, there's really no rhyme or reason to um, wrong or right to this. Already looks awesome in just a short amount of time. So I'm going to zoom out again here for you. Do a real quick dry on this side so I can go to the other side. It doesn't take long to dry because, one, it's warm here. One, it's warm here. And two, I'm not really doing a really deep, um, you know, lots of colors or very wet. So it's it'll dry pretty quickly. So again, I've gone back to the light pink only, the same color that's already on there. And I'm tapping around the edges. And what's nice about that, because if you think about a flower, they don't have perfect edges anyways. It's kind of allowing me to get that, that shape that a flower is going to have around my edges. Again, making sure you come down those, those where the petal comes in. Real, real simple. Oh, I gotta tell you guys about this. We're doing a really cool, there's actually two really cool blog hops coming up. Another way for you guys to win prizes, and you don't even have to do anything except for blog hop. Um, let me explain a blog hop just for in case there's anybody out there that doesn't know what one is. A blog hop is usually when a group of people that have blogs get together and they do one particular pro project, like um, color art, we're doing one at the end of the month, and we're doing an altered shoe. So all of the designers are doing an altered shoe. I know, isn't that fun? And um, you'll get to hop from one blog to the next. That's where the blog hop comes in. So you'll have a bunch of links that you can just click, 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 and go to all the blogs and see the amazing projects that we do. And then there's usually prizes and that kind of stuff involved with it. I'm also doing one with Robin's Nest on the 23rd, and we're doing it with the, um, the CHA designers. So now I'm coming in with that darker pink. Again, doing that tap, 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 tap motion using just the top of my, my um, paintbrush here and getting my center in. So check my blog out. My blog is terrysproul.blogspot.com on the 23rd and the 31st, and you'll get to see what project I make. So again, not cleaning my brush, going to go back into my light pink, and I don't really worry about it contaminating because you usually end up using that anyways. And, and you see how I'm brushing it off almost? That's going to make it less watery. and just get some more depth going in here just just making a little bit of a darker area again again if I think I get it too dark I can tone it down
And if you don't necessarily have to use a baby wipe, you could actually just use a you know Kleenex or something you might have with you if you're uh, doing this in a plane or something. So just getting some really darkness around those edges. So yeah, if you want to um, join a blog and don't want to start your own, I have made you guys one. Just join my group on Facebook called All Things Terry Sproul. And up at the top is the contract for to become a blog member of my blog that I made you guys. So you don't have to have a blog anymore. I made one for you. And then I have... Um, administration rights on it so if you uh, you know have problems or you screw something up I can go in and help you fix it and teach you okay liking that look how pretty that flower is look how easy this is guys okay I'm gonna go down to this flower down here on the bottom this big one again starting with my lightest pink actually I still have a little bit of that center color on there but that's okay go around my edges And sometimes I use my finger to blend it in. Just to get it in depth. I really like when you take a flower off the edge. I think that just looks awesome. So many of you guys bought the um, flowers from Danielle last week, so... Thank you very much. That was awesome. So if you didn't get any, get over there and buy those flowers. Look how pretty that is. Love it. Love it. Love it. Now this one's probably not going to show much of a center because it kind of would be more off. But I'm going to put it in there. Just a hint of it in there. There we go. Just a tiny bit of a hint. Okay, I'm kind of liking my flowers there. Pretty happy. So again, look at that. Already we've got an awesome journal page going in just a matter of minutes. I'm going to clean my brush now because I do want to go in and change colors. And I am going into green. And I've talked to you guys about this before. Green and red make brown. So I want to make sure my brush is clean so I don't create brown. And yes, I know this isn't red, but this is a, tone, or a tint of red. Remember, I've taught you guys that. So I'm going to go in with the lightest green first. Hold on, I need to add a little more water in these. Because it's getting thick, which would be good, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove. See how much more color I'm going to get because they're thicker? See how it's more less of a watercolor and more of a almost like a paint when they're they're uh, been sitting there for a little while so by adding more water I'm going to achieve more of a watercolor nest now so again uh, a leaf shape is real basic even us people who can't draw can make a leaf shape and I'm just going around the edges and kind of tapping with my brush which is kind of giving it an uneven edge because if you think about it, a leaf doesn't have a perfect edge. And I might not put a, a, uh, a leaf on all of them, but we'll see which ones I'm going to do. See how this one, I did it in uh, more watery. So you see how much more watercolory it is where this one's more almost painty. Bad camera. Who's got a bad camera? Looks like the shimmer of the camera is catching it even more. Yeah, it, yeah, it's too bad you're not seeing the shimmer as much. Oh, there it goes. See the shimmer? When I pick it up later, you'll really see the shimmer. So, actually, let me drive this, and then I'm going to go over the other page. Oh, wait a minute. Before I go to the other page, I'm going to put a big leaf right here.
And I'm going to go in and shade these leaves in a little bit. So that's what you can do with the inclusions by making them part of the uh, design. Now I'm going to come back to those leaves. I'm going to just come over here real quick. Since I got this green activate, the lighter green activated. And let me go with a leaf right here. Again, I don't consider myself a, a really good drawer. I mean, a leaf is pretty basic shape. You can do this. I promise. And then I don't think I'm going to put a leaf over there. I'm just going to leave that there. I think I'm going to give the hint of a leaf down here, though. Oh, off camera. I'm going to give a hint that a leaf is there. See that? And since I have so much green going down here anyways from the page before, I think I'm just going to work with that green. <laughs> there we go. Make it meant to be, and we didn't even know it. Okay, let me dry this real quick. We have a lot of videos over on the Color Art team, so if you are looking for ways to use these products and you're not sure you know how, you know, take advantage of that design team. That's what they're there for. They're there to teach you. Okay, now I'm coming in with a little darker green. Well, a lot darker green. And I'm just going to kind of do the same thing that I did earlier with the flowers. I want to put some darker edges in. And this is going to be pretty dark because I don't have a kind of one in between. So I'm going to kind of have to work it in and make it blend. And I'm so I'm going to do that with my baby wipe and allow it to become part of the, uh, like it was meant to be there. And not be so stark, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. So using my baby wipe to my advantage to get that shade in there. And you think about it, there would be shade down here towards the bottom, you know, where the, the, the leaf and the flower uh, meet. It would be more shaded. That would think about nature, how it would be. Okay, real simple. Again, I'm going to come in real close to the flower and get some darker in there. And then work my way around. Okay, that one looks really good. going to wet my finger and blend that out a little more. Okay, again with this same flower over here, or same leaf, I'm sorry, you know what I meant. Again, I'm doing like a tapping motion. I'm not brushing like I do when I use acrylic paints. Real lightly tapping. See, look at that. Isn't that beautiful already, guys? It's amazing how quick that, that goes. Just love these things. They make you look good. Okay, quickly dry these so I can switch to the other page. Probably the only downfall from the, the occlusion is you do have to kind of work with the uh, this flap. Okay, that is really bright. So let me work that out. Got quite a few viewers in the room. Thank you very much for joining me live. I really appreciate it. Please remember to, to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it already. I work really hard on trying to make great videos for you guys and teaching other people to make great videos for you guys. I think that's become my calling lately. So again, I'm just using the baby wipe to help blend those two colors together and make them more of a, a, a one. Oh man, the shimmer on that green is so pretty. Look at that shimmer. Oh, look at that. You can really see it in the pink right there. Oh, so pretty. 
and come back in with a little bit lighter green. And just kind of work the two of them together. Again, I like to tap. It really does make a difference. So I'm going to come down here to these two um, kind of fakey flowers that are fakey leaves that I've got going to make you think there's a leaf there. And just get some darker colors right around the, uh, the petal of the flower. Okay. So again, look at that. Already, we've, we've already accomplished so much in just a short amount of time. Okay, I'm going to switch colors again. Cleaning off my brush with baby wipe. And actually, I need to get a little more water on there because it's... Even though green and blue don't make uh, brown, but still. So now I'm going to go into my background and I'm going to use um, a blue and I'm going to use... This one's called Blue Ice, and this is my lighter blue. I actually have two blues out on my desk. Because, again, I want to kind of do the same thing. I want to work with the lighter blues and then maybe have my darker colors um, in, you know, in other areas to make shading. So, again, I'm just going around making, filling in the background. So I have a solid finished project here. So I was, you know, it's funny too, because when somebody had commented about this um, page that I made on my Facebook page, they were like, that looks so hard. I'm hoping I'm showing you how easy these are to work with. They make you look good. And if you don't, you know, feel comfortable drawing the flowers, we have, Danielle has those beautiful big bloom bo blossoms over at Sin City Stamps. I'm sure she'll gladly put the link up there for you um, that we used um, uh, last week. Where did I use those? Are they in this book? No, I think they're in this book. I'm, I'm working in two different books. These big, beautiful flowers. And you could do the same technique with these big, beautiful flowers and not even have to worry about drawing them out yourself if this intimidates you. That would be a really, really pretty and really super easy to do. And her flowers are nice and big, so it would work out really easy for you. And the there's four flowers in her set. And the four flowers, and is it four or five words? She can let us know for sure. I believe it's four or five words in there. And they're only $20. Adding more water to my, uh, my little pod. Since I do have my Twinkling H2Os out, let me talk about one thing with those. When you put them away... You want to make sure that you do not um, leave water in them. You can let the water dry or evaporate on its own, but you need to make sure that the, um, the uh, lid is left open and they dry on their own. You don't have to literally like pour the water out or anything like that, unless you want to. If you're in a hurry, you could, but to me, that's a waste of color. And I don't like to waste color. So do let them completely dry before you put the cap back on. And um, so that they do not go bad on you. And it's not that they would go bad. It's just kind of like a, well, the way the boss described it to me, the Sin City, or excuse me, the um, color arts owner, she said that um, it's like a science project that they, it's like a rainforest that it keeps getting wet. You know, it stays um, activated longer. And, you know, it's just better to not do that. So beautiful already, huh? Okay, I'm going to real quickly dry this and switch pages. Okay, back 
over here. I want to close this envelope, make it sealed. Okay, more water in my twinks. And just real quickly going around getting this color on and I did want this you know blue to be kind of light so it's working out just the way I kind of envisioned it yes Daniel puts her flowers up there as I knew she would and that like I said that's a, a whole set of stamps for only $20 not bad guys so go check it out and get some over there at Sin City Stamps again I'm just getting a really light wash on here and I'm gonna come back and make them a little darker around the edges and stuff here in a second just what I was looking for. Okay, I got a little darker blue on my desk, and this one's called Autumn, Autumn Skies. It's a little darker blue. So another beautiful shade in the twinks. I did not clean my brush. I'm just going right in and getting the color on there. And my I, my thought here is just go kind of go around the flowers, around the edge. I've talked to you guys about this before, about kind of framing your page. If you kind of do this, Tim Holtz is really famous for doing this. He uh, uses his uh, distress inks and uh, always uh, goes around his edges. And that's because it draws the eye in. And if it gets a little too dark, like I don't like how dark it is here, I might come right back into that blue, the lighter blue, and just kind of make them blend in together. Because I don't like it to stand out and scream like it's two colors. I want them to blend like that. So that's how I will fix that. If I think it's too stark, I'll just come in and fix it and blend it out I have to admit I'll be honest with you guys I've had such a busy week that I was almost tempted to not do a class tonight but then when somebody asked for this page or this idea I was like oh I can do that in no time at all so I don't even have to think and do this one so I was more than willing to do this one. <laughs> Thought about doing it in a shorter video anyway. So again, look how pretty that page is. So I'm just going to come in and do a little more. Hold on. Wrong color. I wanted this lighter blue. A little more blending. And then I'm going to do a stamped in, or quote on here. And I'm pretty much done. So we're going to get done in like 40 minutes. <laughs> So again, I'm going back to the uh, lighter blue and just kind of blending these two together. Still making sure I'm leaving some really, really light areas because that's going to help with the eye. Um, in the art world, they call that the white spot. And, or, and what it does is it allows your eye, the viewer's eye, to rest. It gives it a place like these white spots here which aren't truly white, they're just lighter. That's why you, you, it comes off as white. And it allows the eye of the viewer to almost have a place to rest because there's so much going on. The eye's going around, going around, and going around. And it gets here and it has a chance to almost rest for a second. 
And you don't even really notice that your eyes are doing this, but they are. I like this top, this corner to be really dark. I'm liking that idea going there. Okay. Kind of happy with this. I'm going to darken this up just a little bit just because it's too it's bothering my eye. Okay. I'm liking that. I think that's pretty good. Okay. I have a quote stamp and this is from sin city stamps and it's one of my stamps um on the make a wish um set of stamps which is another really awesome stamp set i used that a couple weeks ago and i actually did that on the front of my art journal here too and it says let your wishes be lighter be light in the wind and plant themselves everywhere so I love that quote and I'm using um, Indian ink as you can tell well loved Indian ink pad and this is from Stuart Superior and that's stuartsuperior.com see how much I love it I have two of them on my desk love this ink pad because it's a permanent ink pad um, it will not bleed um, if I do anything on top making sure I'm going the right way um, so that's the reason I love it so much you can use archival or stays on. It's going to basically do the exact same thing. I'm just an Indian ink fan. Been a fan of this ink pad for a long time. Okay. I'm going to go right here. Make my quote. I probably should have taken it off the block. I hope I get a good image. I'm going to go after it a little harder and see what happens. Pray. Yay, I did good. Okay, happy. I do want to make that stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to go in with my um, my darker blue and just kind of work around it. Terry? Yes? Um, someone said they thought they saw a fairy on one of the other pages that you showed a minute ago. Fairy. Hmm. I don't think I have a fairy anywhere. In here, I have this one we did just a couple weeks ago, and that's um, just a girl with wings. That's a drawing I have going. Um, so no fairies. There is a really cool fairy stamp, though, on one of my um, stamps. I don't remember which one it is right now. It's one of the newer set of stamps. I'm going to blend a little bit more with the uh, lighter blue. Just to blend it out so it's not so stark. You can really see that the shimmer in this particular blue, this autumn sky. Now, see how that kind of made that stand out just a little bit more? You can really see the shimmer now. Look at that shimmering. <laughs> so really simple to make that quote to stand out just a little more than it did a few minutes ago. Okay. Actually, that's pretty much where I'm going to end my page. So you guys have any questions on how to work with um, Twinkling H2Os or pretty much any watercolor I would love you two guys to use twinkling H2O's but really any watercolors work the same way except for they don't have these pretty shimmers that twinkling H2O's have I just thought it needed a little darker down there in that corner so I just put a little darker of the red or darker pink I should say Okay, I'm going to um, see if anybody has any questions while I just finish up a little bit here at the end. If you have any questions, please put them in now. If not, if we missed a question, which we're pretty good about, but if we did, you can always come over to my group called All Things Terry Sproul. 
and ask me there. I will gladly answer your question. Or if you have class ideas or projects that you want to learn, that's where you, you put them. You go over there and make comments to me, and I will do this. That's how this page happened. Somebody said, I want to learn how you did that. See? So you could keep working and get, you know, your colors. Just keep working them in and see how you like it. You know, just keep working it. There was another question. Did you test out the page before you started? No, I didn't. That's an awesome question. Remember when we made these art journals, we started off with watercolor paper. Now, watercolor paper is actually made for watercolor. So whenever you're working with watercolor, you do not want a gesso. You actually want the, um, the, the, okay. The reason that you would gesso a page is it's going to put a seal between the paper and whatever you're putting on top of it. Think of it as a sealer. So with watercolors, you never want to seal because the, the purpose of watercolor paper is that it absorbs into the, the watercolor absorbs into your page and creates these beautiful colors. If I actually gessoed um, my page first, I wouldn't be getting this beautiful um, look going that I am. And I'm actually going to prove that to you. Watercolor piece of paper. I'm just going to take half of it because I don't want to ruin a whole piece. And let's just so this real quick and then let it dry while I just finish this up a little bit and then we will, I will prove that to you. Okay, watercolor paper. Just so. Clean brush. Real, just doing a really sloppy gesso job here. Okay, I'm sorry I'm a little off camera, but you, you get the idea. I'm just trying to get a real quick gesso there. Okay. Let me dry that. I think that's at least this side's dry enough for me to work. Okay, I'm cleaning my brush off again here because it's got just so all over it. Get off there. Okay, clean brush. Now I'm going to grab my Twinkling H2Os and go over that. Do you see how it's not soaking into the paper? It's actually sitting on top. And there's no movement to that paper. It almost feels like it's dry and it's not wanting to move. And even if I add water to it, yeah, it's going to move some. But it's not going to react the same as the other side of the paper, putting the same color on. You see how it moved better for me? Because it, it absorbs into the paper where here it's actually sitting on top. It's still wet on this side because it's sitting on top of the paper because it's sealed. Where this side, see how it's sunk in and it's not dripping. See that? This side's still dripping. And it's the exact same thing I did on both sides. Even if I wet this down, see how it's not going to drip as much because it's soaking into the paper. That's the advantage of watercolor. Yes, it's going to give you some drip because there's water on there. But it's soaking into that paper here. Where here it's still sitting on top and it's still extremely wet. And I could almost even wipe away the color. See how I wiped away the color on that side? That's the gesso side. Here's the other side. I can't wipe it away as much. And that wasn't as dry. If I get it dry, it would not wipe away as well. You 
because it absolutely actually absorbs into the paper more for this side it practically is still allowing me to take it completely off I took that watercolor completely off that side for this side no matter what I can't do that because it absorbed into the paper see the difference gessoed not gessoed so that's the big difference on the um, why you would gesso and why you wouldn't gesso so there was a good quick lesson <laughs> Okay, any other questions? There's our beautiful page. Real simple page, but really, really pretty. Really effective page. It's something that when people look through my art journal, they will definitely stop and look at this page for a few minutes. And I'm just, while you guys are seeing if anybody has any more questions, I'm just adding more depth in here think about joining those challenges let's see if i got all my i know i had notes for myself oh oh that's right tomorrow if you go to the color art um facebook page tomorrow is the bi-monthly scavenger hunt again you don't even have to have an art journal or don't have to have a blog or anything to do the scavenger hunt you just have to have a computer, which I know you all have because you're all here. So that's a great way to get free product from the company. They're giving away the Radiant Gels this time. These guys. These are dimensional paint, which you can tell how much I love because that's one empty jar. Okay, anybody else have any more questions before I end tonight? I'm going to go ahead and throw my logo up again. Right there is my blog. Please go to my blog tomorrow. All the links for these products will be on my blog. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody's saying how pretty it is. It makes me feel good. You guys rock. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to switch cameras and say goodbye. And then. Um, I will see you next week. Oh, sorry. Bad. <laughs> okay. I appreciate you guys all showing up. And um, again, if I missed a question, um, I see a question just popped up there. Hold on. Um, what if you're using mixed media instead of watercolor paper? Mixed media paper kind of is watercolor paper. So you'd probably be okay. And again, I would not gesso it if I'm doing watercolors. That was a question from Deb. Okay. Um, again, check out Color Art Facebook page for the scavenger hunt. Um, Color Art's also doing a monthly challenge. And Robin's Nest is doing a uh, sketch challenge also for you scrapbookers. Yay, 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 yay. Okay, any more questions? Thank you, Barbara. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys, you guys showing up here tonight. Okay, well, I'm going to let you all go, and I will see you again next Tuesday. Again, for questions, go to my group. Thanks so much.